Okay, this one. Okay. This wait, I'm going to check. Oh, I mean. We will start really soon. We will start really soon. We're still waiting for our yeah. second guest, which is Dr. Dr. Sahid. Okay. Okay. We're still waiting. Maybe we can wait for five minutes. <clears throat> Okay, we're still waiting for the person hit. Okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Dr. Sahid and Dr. Saad, could you hear me? Yeah. yeah anyway. Yes. Okay, so we will start now, insyaAllah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, ladi kana ibadi khati ambasira, tabarakal ladi jangan lapis sama ibu rujwa jangan lapis hati raja wa kumaramun. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, we come. So the honorable associate that professor Dr. Saad Deldin, Mansur Gasmelsi, and assistant professor Dr. Sahid Abdullahi Busari as the keynote speaker here in this webinar. Also, the Honorable Dr. Aida Mokhtar as our rector. Thank you very much for giving your time here at the webinar about disability inclusion, especially in education for persons with disability from, from the Islamic perspective. Firstly, let me introduce ourselves. My name is Haryal Salsabila Putri, second year, second semester, uh, communication student in International Islamic University, Malaysia. Yang Yang, could you please introduce yourself? Um, my name is Yang Yang, 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 Yang and I am a third, third year, first time student. Uh, I'm a communication student also. Okay, this webinar is part of our project in professional speech communication class. And before we continue, let us introduce our two great keynote speakers in this webinar. Okay, uh, our, first, uh, our first speaker is uh, Dr. Saadil Mansur Gasmelsi. Uh, he has been an uh, associated professor at the uh, International Islamic University of uh, in Malaysia since 1999. His research area is Sunnah and uh, Ulumul Hadith. Okay, please introduce the second okay. speaker. Okay, thank you. Okay, our second great keynote speaker is Dr. Sahid Abdullahi Busari. He has been working as an assistant professor of Islamic jurisprudence and the legal theory at International Islamic University, Malaysia, since 2020. His principal study focuses on the confluence between Islamic jurisprudence and also socioeconomic realities. 
history and disciplinary teaching and research focus on the intersection between Islamic jurisprudence and the legal theory with social and natural sciences and the contribution of the Islamic jurisprudence and legal approach to these fields. He is also bilingual, Arabic and also English, and he is willing to collaborate in fundamental and applied multidisciplinary research. Okay, uh, now we'll continue. So today's discussion is about disability inclusion. So disability inclusion is a form of understanding the relationship between the way of people function and how they participate in the society. This is also include the realm of education where it is clear that every Everyone, regardless of their different background, has the situation, especially in an Islamic perspective. And we'll start the discussion now. For the audiences, if you guys have any questions during the webinar, you guys can just come. And we'll start. Yang Yang, could you please start this discussion? Uh, so, uh, please, please do some uh, oh, first intro, uh, self introduction. Uh, please do some self introduction about yourself, mm -hmm. like name, nationality, job, and so uh, and others. Please. Uh, so please, uh, the first speaker, Doctor Sadil, do the introduction first. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-Qadillahi ajma'in. Sayyiduna Muhammad al-Nabiya al-Ameen. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome uh, uh, our students here in the, in the table. Welcome Dr. Shaheed. Ahlan wa sahlan bikuma. So my name is uh, Saladin Mansour Muhammad. Saladin Mansour Muhammad. I am from Sudan. Uh, I am a lecturer here in uh, UIA, Kulia uh, of Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman, uh, the good knowledge and human sciences, uh, since 1996. Uh, my wow. specialist is uh, in, yes, in uh, Sunnah, uh, Hadith and uh, science of hadith, ulum al-hadith, and the, the, the science related to hadith, shirh uh, al-ta'adil, fiqh al-sunnah, mabad al-ta'awun al So uh, I'm sitting here uh, in the uh, Quran and Sunnah department uh, since 1996. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, I have uh, some books and uh, many articles and I have uh, research and I'm uh, hearing many conferences overseas and here in Malaysia. Uh, I hope, inshallah, the lecturer will be benefit to uh, this ability and other students. Thank you so much, Dr. Saad. I am from Sudan. Well, uh, yeah. I am from Sudan. Yes, I am from Sudan. Uh, married with uh, uh, four, uh, five kids, huh? four boys, uh -huh. uh, one daughter. Alhamdulillah. Uh, they are studying also in the university. Wow. That's really, that's really background. Dr. Sahid, could you please introduce yourself also? Bismillah. <laughs> Um, we thank our prof, uh, Prof. Saduddin Masur, is our teacher, is our mentor. Alhamdulillah, uh, if we look at the number of years he's been a lecturer, maybe some of us, we are not yet in this dunya. <laughs> so, and that is Baraka, <laughs> with prof, and we listen to him. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Saeed Abdullah Buseri, a lecturer at the Department of Fiqh and of Solo Fiqh. Uh, alhamdulillah so uh, my family is also with me in malaysia 
and uh, my children, alhamdulillah, everybody's fine. And we hope that inshallah, um, we all benefit from this um, program, which is useful to Duma. Thank you. Okay, it was about the questions. The first one, uh, okay, Yang Yang, could you please ask the question? Okay. Uh, our first question is, uh, as a big her lecturer, have you encountered students with disabilities or people with uh, disabilities around you, your family or your friends? Uh, uh, please, the I'll do this first. Okay. 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 Uh, so, uh, some people are complete, uh, some people are disability. So, I think uh, if we have in our family or around us or the student uh, disability, we, uh, we uh, should uh, respect them. Uh, they are makhlukin of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, they are uh, with their minds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all people. So uh, we should respect uh, them. Uh, we should uh, know that uh, this is the iktila or iktibar. Uh, it is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, we can tell the people around us yeah, firstly, if uh, if it is possible to uh, uh, to go to the medicine uh, doctors and do operation or anything, we can do. Uh, if not, <coughs> we should respect and we should uh, be helpful for them because uh, if you help people, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will help you. Wallahu fi aoun al abdi. If you help your brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. And uh, the disability uh, are our brothers. Uh, we should uh, help them. We should uh, respect them. We should uh, do everything, every good thing to them. That's all. Young. No. Don't say it. No. Um, alhamdulillah. Something. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, let me just um, maybe just add okay, more. Thank to you what so the much. Said. Yeah, yeah. Can I go ahead? Let's okay. uh, um, add for the first answer. Dr. Dr. Sahid. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, yes, doctor. I think her internet connection is not good. So, uh, no, I can hear. Uh, continue your. My, my connection is okay. I think is a uh, Sabina. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, maybe her connection is not good. So, so you can yeah. continue your what answer. Question? What is the question? Yeah. So what is the uh, question our now? Our question is: As a fake heart lecturer, have you encountered students with disabilities or people with disabilities around you? Yeah, uh, I think as the prof has mentioned, of course, um, disability or people with disabilities, they are common because this is one of the tests of Allah, as prof has mentioned as well. 
So um, we cannot think that, oh, somebody said I have not seen it before. Maybe it's not possible. Anywhere you go across the world, you must have met somebody that has one disability, maybe from eyes, from the sight, from the speech, from their leg, from their hand. And as I has mentioned, this is a test from Allah, an examination. So in classes, somebody might, might have disability, is your classmate, is your student, is your family member. So this is a test for the person. And it also a test for some of us when we see them. How do we react when we see them? How do we treat them? How do we deal with them? So somebody that has disability as well. So we see them all around. So, but then it depends on how much we uh, we understand how we need to deal with them. So somebody can deny that he doesn't see, maybe because he doesn't understand how to deal. So alhamdulillah, we have seen a lot of them, even as students, as family members, as friends in the society. So alhamdulillah, I think this is a very common thing. So thank you. Thank you so much for the answer, Dr. Sahid. Uh, is my connection is better now? Yeah. Yeah, it's better. Okay, okay so yeah. we'll continue to the next question. Yeah. What do you think about this about people in this modern society? Will this group of people will treat that fairly in the society, maybe, uh, as what uh, Dr. Sah Dr. Sahid and Dr. Saat around? So again, is that? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat the question. What do you think about these other mm. people in this modern society? Are they going to be treated fairly in this, in this world? Or what do you think? Okay, this ability uh, in, the, uh, in our social, uh, I, I, I mentioned before, uh, Islam, Quran uh, mentioned uh, some kind of disability. Al A'ma, Al Abkam, Laysa Al A'ma Harajun, Wala Al Aray Harajun, Wala Al Murida Haraj. So uh, this ability may be in the body or may be in the mind. Be a, so, a psychology, a psychology, a psychology uh, side or a body side. Both of them uh, are happen uh, in, the, in the Islam. So if uh, if you are unmind, uh, that means uh, you are uh, your mind is not okay. Uh, there, there are uh, some uh, condition uh, in Islam. Uh, al uh, in Islam uh, mention al the mind. You should have a mind. If you should, if you have a mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, order you to do so and so. Salah, Azzaqah, and Siyam. But if you don't have a mind, so uh, no taklif. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not ask you to do so. Uh, this is a, a, a psychologic a side. But the uh, body side, Al A'ma, Al A'raj, Marid, uh, uh, the Quran mentioned uh, many kind of uh, or some kind of uh, disability. Uh, that means if you are uh, blind in the sight, uh, also no need to uh, to go ahead for a war. Uh, and, uh, there are some uh, you cannot do. There are some some you cannot do. But uh, you should pray. You should uh, do taqwa and do uh, ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will give you example uh, it's, uh, during the time of Islam, during the time of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a companion of uh, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called uh, Ibn Abdullah ibn, uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum. Abdullah ibn Maktoum is a blind man. 
but he is a good Muslim. He is doing a good job. You know, he is a muazzin. There are five muazzin for our Prophet Muhammad. Yes, we know Bilal. Uh, everyone in Malaysia know Bilal. Is it? The Imam, second man is Bilal. Uh, but uh, there are many muazzin, uh, five. Huh? Abdullah ibn Muslim is one of our Muazzin, of our Prophet Muhammad Sayyidina Bilal is the first one. Uh, Inna Bilal yu'azzin bilaylin fakulu washrabu hatta yu'azzin ibn Muslim. That means Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu is doing adhan in the Fajr prayer early before prayer. Because there are two adhan. There are two adhan. The first one is before the, the time. The second one, when the time is in. So, in the Bilal, you ask in Bilal, you can eat, you can drink during Ramadan, because in the Bilal, doing Adhan early, early morning, before Fajr. But when Abdullah and Yom do Adhan, you should, uh, you should fast. You cannot eat, you cannot drink, you cannot do anything uh, after uh, the Fajr prayer, Fajr prayer, because they the Bilal, he will tell him, Oh, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Muslim, people tell him, Oh, Abdullah, do Azan. Now it is Fajr. So that means Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Muslim is a, a Muazzin. He do a good job. A Muazzin should, uh, should be a, a good Muslim and uh, a, a, honest, a honest one, uh, an alim, a scholar, a knowledge man. Also, uh, there is a surah in Surah Abasa. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Abasa wa tawalla an ja'ahu al-a'ma. Wa ma yudhrika la'allahu yazzakka aw yazzakru fa tanfa'ahu al-zikra. You know al-a'ma, the blind man, who, who is he? He is Abdullah ibn al-Muslim, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda. From al-Muslim is his mom, his mother. So they call him Abdullah ibn al-Muslim. Uh, one day he came to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, me, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam busy with uh, uh, IDD and uh, the important people of uh, Mecca and uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam try to, to encourage them to enter Islam and do Shahada. Uh, so he's uh, busy, uh, very busy, but then after my came. Uh, unfortunately, the Prophet he didn't uh, uh, answer Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Muslim. So, the Quran blame our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abasa wa ta'ala and Jahu al-Ama. That means you should answer uh, this blind man. Uh, you should uh, welcome him. You should uh, sit with him. So, and the Prophet Muhammad busy with the uh, mushrikeen, unbeliever. Uh, after that, after this surah, we call it Sabab al Nuzul, Nuzul al Surah. After this surah, uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi when Abdullah ibn Muslim came, came in, he said, Welcome, Liman Atabani fihi Rabbi. Welcome, uh, the, the man who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blame me for him. Uh, that means, uh, blind man. Uh, he is a very good man and a very respectable and we should respect him and we should uh, help him uh, because he is, uh, uh, he is a human. At last he is a human. <laughs> we should respect all human, even a uh, blind man or uh, one who has some uh, uh, problem in his leg or in his uh, hand or in his uh, body or even in his mind. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for the answer, that, sir. It's really nice for me to learn also about the muazzin, the prophet Eva. And uh, okay, yeah. I'll repeat the same question, Doctor Sahid. Could you please answer? Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about? Uh, uh, okay, what do you think about? So, uh, we'll continue to the next question for Doctor Sahid. What is your perspective? and practices, uh, could you please explain us about the perspective and practices on disability inclusion, especially in Islam? 
how Islam uh, think about the uh, disability inclusion. No. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, in addition to um, what uh, Prof has explained to us now, uh, yes. talking about inclusion, um, the, the idea of inclusion is all about how do we deal with the, disab the disabled people among us. And when we look at some of the explanations we have had now, some of the stories which he has explained to us just now, we'll find out that these are the ways by which we can we can extract principles out of these dealings. How a companions was dealt with, was related by Professor Solana. How Allah commanded him to relate with him. So, you know, how to treat your brother. How, you know, to create a social, you know, uh, care, social inclusion for the disabled people. One of the examples which we have seen, you know, is the case that happened between Bilal and Abu Dhab. You know, you know, he, Bilal, just like a small issue that happened between both of them, and he accused him of, uh, you know, and uh, Anta Ibn Sauda. So, you know, because of his color, that might even be a simple thing, right? Because our color is natural. But then it was just like, oh, because you are very strange among us, everybody here is white and you are just black. And Prophet Salama told him that, look, you still have an element of, you know, ignorance in you. And Abu Zahr was very, very sad for several days, you know. So to show that the Prophet Salama want an inclusion, the ta'ar of just if somebody is identified as being a disabled in the university, it's just for an identity. That doesn't mean you should be denied every right, right to live, right to have hostel, right to participate in sport, right to go to classes. There should be an inclusion. And all these inclusions, you know, there should be um, economic inclusion. For somebody who is disabled, and he can make some economic contribution in society, we should allow him to get a job. You know, intellectual inclusion, we should find a way for him to study. He might need a wheelchair, he might need a special class, he might need a special consideration. We should allow him to develop intellectually. He should be given rights to life. Oh, because, oh, because he's a family member and we just see him as being useless, and we should not allow him to leave. No. He has that right. Aliyah to the Wuju. He should live. He should exist. So all these are inclusion. That for somebody that has ability to contribute to the economy, we should give him a job. So if as a lecturer, there's a kind of particular type of job. For example, I can remember those days when I was in you know Azhar University. There are some of our professors that are blind. Somebody will bring them to class and they perform very well in teaching. So if somebody can still teach because he's blind, they should give him a job. If somebody can contribute, if somebody, so whatever they want to do in terms of life, because of disability, he wants to get married. There should be a way. Because of disability, he wants to have a car. That is why for disabled person, if you want to have your car, you need to go to a doctor. The doctor will tell you and there are special cars that are made for them. So all these are what we call inclusion. Of course, in, in the Western world, there are a lot of other things which they included that are not halal, that are not permissible. But as Muslims, we need to think. And one of the inclusion is that whenever we want to make a solution for the disabled, we should let them be part of the decision. See, this is another problem. For example, if you want to design a job for sisters, the job that Allah has us to use in the Quran and Sunnah, how does it look like? So if a man is designing a job for sisters, are you using a job? No. Sisters that are learned should be part of the design. So disabled people should be part of the design. What kind of job can you do? If you want to get married, how do you want to get married? So if you want to do sport, what are the type of sport you like because of your condition? So these are inclusion. Social inclusion, economic inclusion, financial inclusion, 
religious inclusion. They should be part of the decision so that it's going to be fair and it's going to be just. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sahid, for the answer. And um, Dr. Saad, do you want to add about the yes. perspectives and also practices on disability inclusion in Islam? Okay, you want to meet yes. my other? Uh, before that, yeah, before that, uh, I mentioned five muazzin of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Sayyidina Bilal is the one, Abdullah ibn Maktoum is the other one, uh, Sa'd al-Gharzi, Sa'd al-Gharzi and Zayd al-Sada'i and Abu Mahzura. So five of them, they are uh, the muazzin of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That means one of them is a blind, yeah, one of, one of them is a blind man. Uh, so I can add uh, about uh, what Said uh, uh, said uh, that uh, they uh, the, the disability have the right to to, to do uh, a job any job. Uh, yeah, before our scholar uh, in Islam, there are many many of them are disability. You know, al amish al arid al asam. And upcome. Uh, this is a nickname of a uh, uh, scholar of hadith. Uh, that means uh, the doctor mentioned uh, many few asadiza in uh, Al Azhar al Sharif are flying. Uh, they are doing their job, their job very good. Yes, uh, we have many, uh, many scholars. Uh, they are very good in their, uh, in their field especially in Tafsir, in Hadith, in Arabic language, Nahu uh, al in Balaga. So they are very, very, very good. Uh, and they have a nickname, uh, like uh, one of them, Al-A'mash. Uh, Al-A'mash have something uh, in his eyes. Uh, 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 eyes. Al-A'raj, uh, he has uh, something also in his neck. Uh, uh, and Assam. Uh, so some of them are blind, yes, and they are memorized the Quran, and they are memorized the Hadith, and they are memorized the uh, poetry of Arab, uh, even the Mu'allaqat, other things. They are very, very intelligent. In our uh, time, Sheikh Abdul Hamid Fisk is a very, very good Khafif. Uh, uh, he, he has every day, every Jum'a, he has khutbah, and the people write all this uh, khutbah, they are make it like uh, a book. He's a very big alim, he, is, uh, he graduated from Azhar Sharif, uh, and uh, he go there to the Asiyan of Dunia, and he's a uh, uh, imam, he's the imam of uh, the masjid, and now he's very very famous man, Sheikh Abdul Hamid Kish. And nowadays, uh, some people wrote a thesis about him, uh, Master and BSD. Uh, he is a modern man. Uh, he passed away in 1996 or 1997. Uh, he is an Egyptian man. Uh, that means uh, uh, anyone of us can be uh, good in his. Uh, his field, uh, if he if he is uh, he study hard and uh, that means uh, disability cannot be uh, uh, cannot be uh, something that stop be able to, to to do a good job. Alhamdulillah, we have uh, many students in our university here. Uh, they are very 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 good. They are very good. Uh, I have one of my students now, he is in the master. Uh, he has something wrong in his eyes, but alhamdulillah, he is doing well. Now, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Saad. And now I'm a bit curious about the, uh, the Islamic teachings that taught us how to uh, taught us about disability inclusion. Maybe Dr. Sahid, could you please tell us that? Maybe in, in, in surah or any hadith that Allah subhanahu wa 
uh, maybe uh, I think before Dr. Sahid and Dr. Sahid is already mentioned, but I'm a bit curious about the other speeches. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, I think, uh, yeah. So um, there are, of course, there are a lot of uh, evidences, you know, that suggests that um, there are conditional people, disabled people, even during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, there was a case of a person that came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he has, she has a disease and he said, look, you know, what is happening to me whenever I fall down, I just don't want this to happen to me again so that my my nakedness will not be open. And the Prophet Salama told her that this is a test from Allah. If you, you have a choice to ask for Allah to heal you and or you, you should be patient with Allah. So it shows that even when we have problems like disability, is one of the tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It demands you to be patient. And this is why Allah has given them a lot of rewards. Disabled people are naturally patient. You know, you can run around, right? But because it's on a wheelchair, you cannot run around like you. You can quickly be on your queue. He has to just be patient on that queue. So Allah give them that natural patience. And that is why as human beings, you know, as Muslims, there are three patients that Allah requires from us. The first one is as sabra ala ta'a. You know, to follow the will of Allah, we have to be patient. As sabra ala muharim, yani muharimullah. Those things Allah has prohibited from us. Don't eat this, don't do this, don't touch this. We have to be patient. Sometimes you like to do it, but you remember, oh, Allah says it's haram. Then, so if there is a problem that Allah inflicted with somebody because of the sight, because of the leg, maybe accident or call, because of the mouth, he cannot speak properly, or he cannot hear, he has defect in the, in the hearing. All these are problems, he has to be patient. So once he's patient, based on some of the hadiths that we have seen, and you know, there is even the story of Prophet Ayub, alayhi salatu wasalam. But Ayub, he, he has, you know, he has that problem of disease that, you know, all his body was full of, you know, attack with different kind of things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he was patient. He was patient with Allah and eventually he overcome this problem. So disability could be overcome. It could be permanent. That is just like disease. But then once you hold on with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will reward you. That is why somebody who has a problem, it makes you closer to Allah. So this is one of one of the you know lessons we can learn from a disabled person. It makes you close to Allah. So so somebody that is even disabled, it makes him. It's just like takfir mina zunu. So it cleans you from some of your sins. So it redeems you from some of your own mistakes. So if you are a helper. So if you have somebody who is in distress, who is disabled, so you are you are relieving from that problem. You can imagine the reward you have. So also it also increases the sincerity with Allah because you know, oh, this is from Allah. So you know the cases of the companions that we mentioned. So it keeps your trust with Allah, and Allah also promised them al jannah. There was always a promise of al jannah. So, so there is an hadith of Prophet Salama that says that يعني, عظم الجزاء مع عظم البلاء وإن الله إذا أحب قوما ابتلاهم فمن رضي له الرضا ومن سقط له السخط. So whoever that is, you know, he, he always believed that oh, this is from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will be sufficient and will be enough to to reward. Uh, such a person so um this is a, a, a test from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that requires uh you know being patient and whoever that is patient allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient to reward the person with al jannah so disability is uh could be natural could have been as a result of some problems but one of the reward that allah 
who has promised the disabled person from the hadith is that Allah will reward them with al Jannah. Even though they were patient with Allah throughout their life, they are guaranteed with al Jannah. So if you are now a helper of a disabled person, you can imagine the reward you'll be getting because he's already guaranteed al Jannah for being patient. But you are now helping and assisting him with all his challenges. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sahib. Yang Yang, could you please continue the question? Okay, we're still, still muted. Yang Yang, could you please unmute your mic? Yeah, mute. Your mic on oh, Sorry. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, so our next question okay. is, uh, are there any teachings related to uh, disability inclusion issues within the uh, jurisprudence? So please, uh, Dr. Sahadil, first. Uh, okay, again, again, please. Uh, question is, again. are there any teachings related to disability inclusion issues within the uh, jurisprudence? Uh, ju jurisprudence. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, as uh, Brother Dr. Said mentioned, there are many, many uh, ayat in uh, Quran mentioned, uh, a few of them mentioned uh, the disability uh, and also uh, the hadith, also the hadith. Uh, so, uh, I can mention Hadith Ibn Maktoum. Ata Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله أرشدني وعند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رجل من عظماء المشركين فجعل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعرض عنه ويقبل على الآخر فيقول له أترى بما أقول بأسا فيقول لا فنزلت عبس الضالة. I mentioned this ayah before. So uh, that means Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, give uh, the disability a chance. Uh, because they are a human, uh, they can come, uh, they can study, uh, they can ask, uh, they can, uh, the, the teacher will answer, and this also should answer their uh, question. That means all of us are quality uh, in knowledge, all of us quality in knowledge. Uh, no difference, no difference between, uh, between uh, the, the, the honor man or al ashraf or du'afa. Uh, that means the ihtiyayat al khasa or disability uh, should have their uh, rights in, uh, in studying every field. He can study in Islamic studies, engineering, everything. Uh, he wants to study, they, we should have to give him the chance. The government and the university and the people here should give uh, the, uh, the disability uh, their chance. Alhamdulillah, uh, we have uh, our brothers with us here. That means equality. Uh, that means their right, uh, they have their rights. They, they have their rights and they can do everything uh, can do. And also, uh, they have the right to, to belong money and do uh, and build a house and marry and uh, have a kids huh? uh, 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 if he's uh, able to do that if he's able to do that he can do that uh, in this mention in surah al-faqara regarding the loan uh, he should uh, he should write uh, also uh, uh, the, the loan and uh, his wali can do uh, he can replace him if he didn't do it he can replace him uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned also uh, these poor people in the Quran in Namaz Sadaqatu Lit Fukarai wal Masakin wal Amirin Aleha wal Mu'allafa Taqulubuhum wa bil Riqab wal Ghairimin uh, uh, 
فقراء that mean poor so we can include uh, the disability in poor man or poor woman uh, so they can take the zakah we can take the zakah and uh, we should uh, fulfill their, uh, their needs we should fulfill their uh, needs uh, and also uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give reward for all people, disability or undisability. Uh, that means uh, all people are equal. All people are equal. We should uh, we should uh, do uh, the good deeds. We should do the good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us. Uh, in another hadith, uh, Sayyidina Jabir, Rasulullah بل سيدكم عمرو من الجموع عمرو من الجموع he has something wrong in his leg عمرو من الجموع he has something wrong in his leg شيخ سعيد what we call it الأعرج أعرج شيخ سعيد what do you call الأعرج in English is it handicap handicap yeah handicap uh, he is a handicapped man, uh, but Nabi uh, uh, make him uh, is a prince. He is a seed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Saad. Dr. Sahib, do you want to add something? Or... Yeah, I think um, Prof has mentioned a lot of um, jurisprudence that are relating to the um, disabled people uh, through the sight, through the hearings, through, you know, moving around. So, but, you know, one of the things is that sometimes they might need uh, somebody to be responsible for them. Sometimes they might not. So in most cases, if it has nothing to do with their mental health, then we cannot do inter interdiction for them, you know, hajiru. So hajiru is only meant for somebody that has mental derailment. As sefi, how mugma alayhi. So somebody who is just stupid or somebody who has lost part of his But In most cases, uh, the, the disabled people, maybe because of the leg, it shows that because he's disabled, that doesn't mean he cannot buy a car. That doesn't mean he cannot invest. That doesn't mean he cannot have a bank account. That doesn't mean he cannot own property. So in Sharia, they can own property. So the most important thing is that he has the money. So if they want to get married, they can, because if they have fulfilled all the condition of marriage. So, I mean, oh, he can, he can get, can she be pregnant? Or can he make a woman to be pregnant? Yes, he can. In fact, a man that cannot make a woman to be pregnant may go for marriage with some conditions. So there are many things that is related to them as well in jurisprudence, just to take care of their rights, to take care of their, you know, their own life as well. So, but in most cases, except on few occasions that they might need to, uh, somebody might need to be a guidance for them to interdict, interdict them. Uh, you know, so that the person will be guidance to take a decision, or else once they are mature, like a normal person, they can take the decision for themselves. They can be involved in decision making. They can be members of house of assembly. They can walk. They can travel. They can do other things that everybody is doing, except that they will need some little uh, provisions. Even we that we are physically fit and sound, we all need provisions. You know, we need provisions for us to do many things. So they also need provisions for them. So I think it is in the area of provisions that we need to uh, look at in order to help them 
to achieve their purpose in life. Thank so you thank so you. much, Doctor. Okay, since Doctor Sahid and also Doctor Saad is a lecturer, we'll continue the discussion regarding disability inclusion and also education. It's kind of related. And my question is that, what is your view on the behavior of the community? Uh, let's say the community is IIUM student towards person with disabilities in the surrounding, in their surrounding. And is there any adequate education for general public about disability? That's the question. Maybe Dr. Saad, could you please answer? Okay, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, I have uh, my uh, experience uh, in this uh, area. Uh, when uh, when I have been in the uh, post uh, study uh, in master degree, uh, I have one of my friends uh, is a blind man. So we get in the same day. Uh, so we are staying in the same uh, hostel. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Wa uh, I didn't uh, every I didn't left left him alone uh, a long time this year. We are going there uh, to the lecture. I am writing. Uh, he cannot write, but uh, uh, we are. I am writing for him also, and uh, attend uh, the lecture. And after that, we are discuss with us uh, with uh, uh, discussing the the, the lecture and uh, doing the uh, uh, questions and answers. So one year, I didn't leave, leave him. Uh, Alhamdulillah, until the exam, he finished the exam and he got uh, a high mark than me. He got a high mark than me. Alhamdulillah, uh, after that, uh, I am writing his, my, my thesis, uh, but uh, he wrote a different thesis. And he finished, Alhamdulillah, his master. And he finished his PhD, but a long time uh, with the uh, helping of his wife and uh, his brothers. Alhamdulillah, before two or three years, he finished his uh, PhD also. Now he's a PhD holder. He's a blind man. And he's a very good man and a very intelligent man. He's a khatib of uh, his village. Uh, Alhamdulillah, he married. He has a kids now. His kids in the university, so that means uh, the, the 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 ability uh, man or woman can do a good job. Uh, and we are here. We are here in the university uh, as uh, a knowledge giver. Uh, we should uh, respect these people. Uh, we should. Uh, help them uh, in the hotel, in the classroom, in the cafeteria, in the stadium, any area in the bus station, in the train station, we should help them, we should uh, be uh, a good Muslim uh, in creating these people because they are, they, they need our help. They need our help. Uh, if you are in the hostel, you have uh, a friend, uh, you should help him. You should uh, give him the notes and you should answer his questions if he has a question. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will uh, give you a good reward because uh, anyone uh, have this uh, disease, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, test him, exam him. So, Ashadukum bala al ambiya, summa al awliya, fal amthal, fal amthal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test uh, our Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and test the Prophet before him. Many tests. Even uh, in his house, Munafiqeen, uh, they, they said that uh, they, they talk about Sayyidah Aisha. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said in the Quran, in the Ladina Jaw will be if you are put to Mikum, that's a good thing. 
this uh, ayat in Surah An-Nur about an uh, ifk. That uh, that means they uh, they mention uh, batting for Sayyid Aisha. She is Umm al -Mumin. She is the wife of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That means uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will test. Uh, he test the Prophet and he test uh, the Sahaba, uh, companion of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many cases, even in the body or uh, even uh, in the sharaf. Uh, or in the house, in, in their wives. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to uh, may, uh, be a patient, uh, sabr. Uh, if we are, uh, have a patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us. Allah ta'ala alam. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Sa'ad. Okay, uh, Dr. Sahid, do you want to add from Dr. Sa'ad? Is there anything you want to add? Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, based on the questions that... Um, uh, can you remind me the question again? So that I'll be on track. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> okay, so the question is that... Uh, what is the what is your view on the behavior of the community? Let's say the community is IIUM student, so where the person with disability in their surrounding, and also is there any educate education for general public about disability? Yeah, I, I think um, as Prof has rightly mentioned some of the examples, uh, though IUM as a good community has actually given some lessons, you know opportunity for us to learn how to deal with the disabled people for example when we go to the park there are special spaces for them when you go to you know even to to, to get into the lift in classes in mahalla you know to participate in the masjid there's a place so i mean there are a lot of things that uh, and um, giving them a quota to be part of the university. Universities not say, oh, because you have disability, you cannot come. They still give them space. And I could remember, you know, one of the semesters I had one of my students, mashallah, is very, is very active and good. Always, his camera is always on, despite his condition. So but when it comes to exams, I have to just find a way to make, you know, give him special consideration for submission because the way he's, he's going to write he cannot see and as, as much as possible so he has his gadget that he uses so i have to give him extra time because the university give that conditions that you know there should be a way we are so there must be a way we adapt so all these things we are doing now getting information from lecturers through webinar there should be a way to translate it into the society so that people will be aware. Many people are just like, they don't even think it is there. Maybe through the khutbah of the Juma, maybe through, you know, the Osra programs, maybe through, you know, some student programs, there should be awareness. So the more people are aware, the more they are conscious of giving helping hands to the disabled people so that they could be able to achieve some of their own objectives in life. They can do many things. The only thing is that they need little assistance. So they can, but they needed our assistance. And for every assistance you offer, you get the reward. So people, more awareness need to be created based on some of these things you are doing now. So one of the things I think this webinar should do is how do we translate some of the ways by which we can help uh, the, uh, the disabled people in our society. So creating more awareness, you know, teaching people the benefits and teaching them how to help. Somebody doesn't know how to help. Somebody who is blind, how do you help him? Somebody who is on a wheelchair, how do we help him? Somebody who cannot hear properly, how do you help him? So you met them at the eateries, you met them at the cafeteria, you met them at the masjid, you met them on the road. How do you help them? They need different things. They need little assistance. How? And what are the rewards that are there when you help them? So I think we need to just translate this into action. So Barakallahu Thank you, Dr. 
Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, welcome, uh, Yang Yang. Could you please continue the questions? Okay. So, uh, how do you think students, family, uh, family members, friends, or strangers should be disability inclusive in the in this current uh, environment? Should uh, should education be stepped up? So maybe the Dr. Saad first. Okay. Uh, yeah, in our community, uh, yeah, there are a disability, uh, man or women. So uh, we should teach people or uh, to know that they are, uh, we should treat them uh, nicely uh, because Islam is uh, asked us to do so, to do so. Uh, uh, the best of you is uh, the, the uh, one who good manners. So good manners should treat even uh, your uh, your uh, members of uh, in, in the house, uh, the members of the family, or your uh, friends here around you, surround you in the in the. Uh, in the apartment or in the village, uh, your uh, brothers in the in the classroom or in the hostel. So uh, we should uh, be good manners. خيركم أو المطعون أتنافل أو أحسنكم أخلاق المطعون أتنافل الذين يألفون ويلفون. Our Lord Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in his life, uh, he treated people uh, very very good. Even they are uh, kafir, they are unbelievers. Nabi uh, Sallam treat them nicely. Even the Muslim, even the neighbors. Mazal Jibril yusini zinjar hatta zanantu anhu tewarrito. Say Nabi Sallam every time as our Prophet Muhammad Sallam about his neighbor. Treat uh, and, and uh, be a good for your neighbor. So and Nabi Sallam. Uh, think that he he, uh, he he has when he passed away, uh, the neighbor should take from his inheritance, miras. Uh, so uh, the companion of of a problem, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do so. Uh, Said Abu Bakr Siddiq, he is the Khalifa, uh, the first Khalifa of of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he is very good to uh, his people, even the poor. One day, uh, Sayyidina Omar, uh, he, uh, he saw Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq going to uh, a house. Uh, when he checked that house, there is a blind woman. Every day, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq came and uh, feed her, and bring her food. So uh, after that, Sayyidina Omar do the same job. She is a blind woman. She do not have any. Uh, kafil, any wakil to, to do for her. Uh, so the Khalifa, the Khalifa of uh, Muslimin, he came and helped her. This is our Khalifa. This is our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is uh, the companion of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We should uh, do so. We should do so because uh, Islam is for all, for all. Uh, and uh, we should uh, treat people nicely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Saad. Dr. Yeah. Sahib, uh, you want to add something about it? Yeah, I think um, as we mentioned, it's, um, it's almost the same thing now that uh, community awareness need to be increased. So, you know, this is one of the best way by which we can help the disabled people in our society. So we need to create more awareness so that people will understand why this condition is like this. That is, it's a test from Allah. And the disabled person is naturally patient. You know, he has to just accept it. So we ourselves, if a disabled person is accepting this condition, then we also need to accept the condition that we need to help. You know, he needs to just help him to cross the road. I say, oh, I'm in a hurry. Subhanallah. 
Can't you just imagine if it is you that is on the wheelchair? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you be patient? So they are naturally patient with their condition. So we also need to be patient with them. And we need to understand how and when we need to assist them. So this awareness needs to be created more and need to be translated into society, into schools, into, into schools, into um, neighborhoods, into family members. So by this, uh, we could increase you know, productivity. Whatever they can do to the society is part of what we are, we, we are talking about. So uh, intellectually, economically, so they can do a lot of things too. So, but we need to help them to be able to be useful. So as much as we make them to be useful, we'll get reward in this world and hereafter. So I think translating all this knowledge, all these lessons into action is the next thing we need to do for us to be able to help the disabled in our society. Thank you so much, Dr. Sahid. And we almost at the end of our webinar. Before that, I really want to know about the, I think it's about the closing statement and also the advice that you can give to our audiences about disability inclusion, especially from Islamic perspective and also for university students. Dr. Sahid, could you please go ahead first? Okay, you want me to start with that? Oh, is Prof. Yes. And after that, no. well, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um, well, as we have mentioned initially, that uh, this is a test from Allah. So, for somebody who is disabled himself, Allah is testing him to be patient. And once the person can be patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed them. Al-Jannah. See? So just like the hadith we mentioned that, that Anas himself reported, So if Allah has afflicted you with something like disability from the high, from the side, Allah has granted them Al-Jannah. So we should know that once you see a disabled person in front of you, then you are seeing somebody that Allah has guaranteed Ali Jannah. So if you see somebody saying, oh, I'm coming from Ali Jannah, you know how you welcome him. Somebody say, oh, I'm from the office of the prime minister. Oh, mashallah, ahla wa sala. So if you say, oh, I'm working from the office of the king of Malaysia. Oh, mashallah, you want to embrace the person. So for some of us, we just look at them and see, if, oh, he's going to disturb me. I'm going to help him to cross the way. I'm going to help him to pass through the lift. I'm going to help him to pack his plate in the cafeteria every time, every time. Look, this is somebody Allah has guaranteed Jannah. So when you help him, then one day Allah, you will remind Allah, oh Allah, this person has been helping me. So we should understand this from this hadith, that you are helping somebody that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised Ali Jannah if he can be patient. So please, brothers and sisters, we should see them as one of us as our brothers and sisters, that we just need to help. You know, we need to just do little things to them so that they can be able to be useful. And whatever good we have done to them is going to come back to us. Every good we have, we have done to them is coming back to us as human beings. We get a reward of it in multiple. So, and this is just little I want to add as a closing remark. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Saad. Dr. Saad, could you please give us the closing okay. segment? Okay. Okay. My advice uh, to my students and uh, brothers and sisters uh, that means Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, will test you will test you in this uh, dunya. So if you, if you uh, patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. Uh, so we should be patient. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma min muslimin yusibahu adhan shawka fa ma fawqa illa kaffar allahu biha sayyiatuhu wa haqqat anhu zunubahu kama tahattu shajara 
كما تحط الشجرة ورقها. That means anything uh, you have in this دنيا, even the, uh, the corn in your leg or in your hand, uh, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will, uh, will cover uh, your, uh, your uh, ذنوب, your سيئات. Uh, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will forgive you uh, like the tree. When we move the tree, uh, the something will fall down from the tree. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made, uh, made you like this, uh, like one who shakes the tree. Uh, that means uh, we should patient if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us. This for uh, the disability. And for other people, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the mind. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ فَطَلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِمَّا خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا So if you saw uh, any people has a disability, uh, you should uh, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are okay. Uh, and you should be kind for him. You should be kind for him. Uh, if uh, because uh, as Sayyid mentioned that you should help him for in the road, you should help him in the hostel, you should help him in the classroom, you should help him in the cafeteria, at any place in the library. If he asks you help him, you should help him. Uh, and he will make dua also for you. He will make dua for you. Uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the other hadith, Ashad al nas balan al anbiya thumma al amthal fal amthal. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and other Prophet. So uh, if you pay special, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. Uh, that means uh, we should uh, be a good uh, for other people uh, and for our friends. Because dunya is a short time. Dunya is a short time after that year after. It is a long time. Sermadi. Uh, forever. No death at that, uh, at that life. It is uh, uh, no death. No, no death. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a reward for everything we do. We should have a good niya. We should have a good niya. ذات الجور والله تعالى أعلم بالصواب فإليه المرجع والمعاب اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Thank you Thank you Okay Thank you Dr. Saad and Dr. Sahid So in the end uh, that was the uh, incredibly interesting presentation from our two amazing uh, keynote speaker, Dr. Saad and uh, Dr. Sahid. With the end of this session, our webinar session ended too. Thank you. Uh, we, are, we apologize for any shortcomings in this webinar, especially the internet connection. Thank you. Very, very much for the for your time, Dr. Saad, Dr. Sahid, and also our viewers on Facebook Live. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala reward you for your good knowledge you spread today. I have happily end today's webinar with Hamdalah, Alhamdulillahirobbilalamin, Subhanallahu Taalaikumsalam. Wassalamualaikumwarahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.